two, three, four. So you guessed it, today's lesson is on finger picking, basic finger picking technique. So one of the um, biggest issues that can cause plateaus that I see with my students um, and uh, non-students <laughs> is um, not using the right finger position for finger picking. So theoretically speaking, if you have fingers on assigned strings, then really all you're dealing with are the different finger pick patterns. If, for instance, you're just trying to use your thumb and your index finger, so now this finger is kind of randomly, you can survive, you can make this work. You're never going to be able to reach great speeds doing that. At some point it's going to get really confusing for your fingers unless they're used to going to assigned strings. It's based on classical guitar technique and the way you want to look at it is, is if you take your six strings, we're going to split them in half. So you can almost look at it when I'm playing finger picking and I'm adding a melody in and I've got the bass going. It's very much like a piano player whose left hand is playing the bass and whose right hand is playing the melody. At some point they do join, sometimes. Uh, but basically we want to think of that separation. But I think of my thumb as the left hand of the piano player and I think of uh, these fingers, my uh, index finger, my middle finger and my ring finger, I think of those three fingers as being uh, the right hand of the piano and that gives me a chance to split my brain so I can do some complex things like keep a bass line and play a melody at the same time. But for now we're going to split our strings and we're going to say Remember that this is our first string because it's the highest pitch string. Our first and our second and our third strings, that's one half, and we split it with our fourth, our fifth, and our sixth string. We're going to call those the bass strings. So here's your finger assignments. Because my E, my A, and my D strings are considered my bass strings, my thumb is going to take care of the bass notes. So. Um, in classical literature, in our right hand we call the thumb is, is P, I, M, A. You can call it thumb, index, middle, ring, finger, whatever works for you. So, we see that our bass notes are going to be found on either our D string, our A string, or our E string. So the thumb will get that assignment. Now, our third string the G string, the assigned finger is going to be our index finger. The B string, the second string, our assigned finger is going to be our middle finger. And for our E string, our assigned finger is going to be our ring finger. Now, because the thumb is going to take care of the bass note of the chord, the bass note of the chord is the lowest note of the same name as that chord that's found on the bass string. So like uh, a C chord, the bass note on a C chord is going to be a C note because a C chord started theoretically as a C bass note. It's like the root of a tree. You see the tree but it started in the ground as a root. So if you're playing a D chord, the root of that D chord is going to be a D on your bass strings. The root of a G chord is a G and that's going to be the lowest note in that chord of that name on one of your bass strings, meaning your E, your A, or your D string. For now, 
Let's just do a simple exercise, okay? And this is just a roll. It's to get your fingers working. Now, I do not recommend anchoring your pinky, all right? Some people do it. Some people are amazing at it, despite the fact that they anchor their pinkies. Because when you anchor your pinky, I know you're doing it so that you know where you're at on your guitar, but you're literally pulling your hand into the guitar. And you need to create a bell shape. You see this bell over here? Right here, you need to create a bell shape. Because the tone is gonna to be much better. If I put my pinky down right away, look at the tension. It's real hard to do, hard for me to do. Look at the tension that's created in my tendons in my hand and it's pulling my fingers into the string when what I really need to do is to have a nice C clamp going and you want to think about the way that a harpist plucks a harp like this not like that which is what's going to happen if I anchor my pinky I let my pinky just kind of relax so these guys are used to working simpatico with one another so um, you want to get over your sound hole. This exercise is going to be our sixth string, our third string, our second, our first, our second, and our third. It's a roll. It sounds like this. That's sixth string, third, second, one, two, three. Now here's the thing. Don't even continue unless you have the right fingers because the whole point of this video is that if you want to learn to finger pick without any plateaus as to how quickly you can pick and how complex a pattern you can pick, you must be consistent with your fingerings. All right, so we take our metronome. Yay, I have this one today, my drummer's metronome. Uh, drummers use it and also drummers gave it to me. Ha! Hint! Hint! Drummer said, here, take that. Okay, so I get my metronome going nice and slowly. It's going to be six, three, two, one, two, three. Six, three, two, one, two, three. Thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. Thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. All right. So I have my foot propped up on a footstool. Um, that's very important because I've got to be able to relax and have my guitar on my leg. All right. So here we go. No chord. One, two, three, four. This will just acclimate your fingers to the strings, to the assigned position. Now let's say that your bass note is on your fifth string instead of your sixth. So now we're going to go to our fifth string with our thumb. All right, so that's my A string. Now what if our bass note is on our D string? There you go. So this is just a basic roll. And the bass note that I play is going to be completely dependent upon what chord I'm playing. So now what we're going to try and do is we'll do this with a couple of chords. We'll go from a D to an A. And those will be pretty easy because if I play a D chord, right, my bass note is D. And that's my open D string. If I play an A, 
then my bass note is my open A string. Right? Okay, got the metronome going. We're going to do two measures or two repetitions on D, two repetitions on A, two repetitions on D, two repetitions on A. One, two, three, four. Then we change to A. Then we go back to D. Good. So now you can try this with a bunch of different chords because the idea is that you want to be able to get a flow going. I'm just grabbing random chords right now. Okay, so we learned a few things about basic finger style today. The first thing is, is that we want to start using assigned fingers, okay? The thumb takes care of the bass notes, which could be E, A, or D, all right? Your index finger will always be on the third string. Your middle finger will always be on the second string. And your ring finger will always be on the first string. And then the patterns will just change. Your thumb will change according to the bass note and the other fingers will not change the strings they play. There are exceptions to that rule, we're not worried about it now. They're not going to change the strings that they play, they're just going to change the order. So different strumming patterns just change the order that your fingers move in. So the first uh, finger pick that we learned was just a little roll. So that's just some basic finger picking advice, all right? So anyway, enjoy. Mm -hmm.